Hey, Life Groups. I'm so excited to share with us today about the faith to serve. Before I jump into my content, I'd really love for us to actually just, when you hear that word serving, what comes to mind? Um, chat amongst yourselves real quick, and then we're gonna jump into the content and unpack it together. I hope that there was constructive and uh, maybe even uh, polarizing thoughts or points of view, but that's all healthy and good to help us get to uh, the root of what a word actually means. So when we think of this idea of faith to serve, it really has to be a faith in something or faith uh, in someone for us to then follow and then do as he does. So uh, the full context of this idea of faith to serve is faith in Jesus to serve. And then we've got to ask ourselves, serve what, serve whom? Um, but we're going to just first unpack this faith in Jesus to serve. Uh, he himself instructs us uh, to do so by actually giving us an example of how he himself came to serve and not to be served. So if our faith is in Jesus, the context of our lives is we have faith in Jesus too. And in the context of this message, it is to serve because he was an example for us and how we ought to serve. It says this in Matthew 20, verse 26 to 28. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever would be first among you must be your slave. Even as the son of man came not to be served, but to serve and to give life and to give his life as a ransom for many. So essentially what, this, what, this, what that is saying to us is that uh, Christ came as an example for us to follow by coming down to serve and not to be served. So if our faith is in Jesus, then the context of how we understand the concept of serving is to serve and not to be served. And one other reason why we would do this is because he instructs us to do so. And he says this in John 15, verse 12. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. If you think of this idea of love, it really is, in part of its fullness, in part of that idea of love, is that serving is a part of that. Christ laid down his life as a ransom for many, as an act of service, because he had faith in his Father and the plan that his Father had for him and for humanity. So Christ is our example of serving, and he also commands us to serve. We love our neighbor by serving them well. We love each other by serving each other well. So when we think of this idea of serving, it is actually far beyond just what we have come to reduce it to, I think. And it's not even in a bad thing or a bad way but that's just the nature of the culture that we're exposed to. We serve in church in the context of uh, his kingdom on a Sunday, and that's phenomenal and that's amazing. However, I do think it's quite limiting to the fullness of what uh, having the faith in Jesus to serve can and should look like for us as believers in Christ. I'd love for you guys to chat amongst yourselves real quick on what the fullness of serving looks like for you and not just in the context of church. Have a little chat and I'll be back in a few minutes. I hope that that was exciting conversation, super fun and great for all of you. Um, I'm gonna read James and this portion of scripture is one that is quoted quite often and it really relates to our performance. And I wanna just debunk that a little bit and maybe right size the context of the scripture. So James chapter two, verse 14 to 17 says this, what good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith, but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace and be warm and filled, without giving them things needed for the body, what good is that? So, so also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Now, very often when people hear this portion of scripture, they're saying, if I don't work, if I don't do something, then God won't move. You know, the statement, God only helps those who help themselves. Nothing could be further from the truth. What this is actually speaking to us about is when you and I have faith in Jesus, it means that our lives should be a demonstration of that faith. It means that our lives are a witness of our faith in Jesus. 
which is to say we ought to love people the way that Christ loves and loved us. So we display our faith in people because of the uh, great example that Christ set for us and how he displayed his love for us, even going to a cross and paying a price that is never his to pay. So the fullness of our lives is acts of faith. We are generous in moments when it is absolutely needed and uh, we might think it's undeserved, but it's needed in a moment because we have faith in Jesus because his generosity towards us is felt on a regular basis. We trust in his provision because his, and this is an act of faith when we tithe, because he has shown himself to be a provider for us in our lives. That is the fullness of what the scripture means, that our lives are an act of faith. Everything that we do is an act of faith. So therefore, our faith leads to works or deeds or things that we do in faith because we believe in Jesus. That's not different to how you and I serve. We serve because of our faith in Jesus and how he has shown us how to do it, how to uh, love our neighbor well. Because as I said, loving is an act of faith. I mean, an act of serving. We love people by serving them well. Uh, which leads me to my next question for us to discuss together. Because I really love for us to um, start off by actually uh, identifying where we are, which is to say, here's where I'm at with the idea of serving. And I obviously have given you more stuff to think about and uh, expanded our idea of serving quite a bit. So now we identify where we are and then we actually make a decision from this point on to do things differently. Otherwise, the things that we hear are just things that we hear. They go in the one ear and out the other, but we don't actually apply them to the fullness in the context of every aspect of our lives. So chat together now on how you can serve your neighbor, love your neighbor differently from this day on. Like what's the faith step that you're going to take from this day on? What's the first thing that you're going to do to move yourself towards serving people, not just in the context of church, but in the context of every aspect of your life? And I'll be back to wrap up our faith to serve message. Now, very often uh, we can hear these messages and hear these points of view or these thoughts. And some people might think, why should I? Some people might think it's not convenient. Some people might think it's not really fun. Some people might think it's not really easy to do. And those thoughts aren't invalid. They are absolutely true. However, again, I got to point you back to Jesus. He was the example. Doing the things that he did for us, even dying on the cross, was not convenient. It was not easy. It was not fun. He suffered tremendously for you and I. And if we are uncomfortable for just a little bit to reveal God's glory, to reveal Jesus and our faith in Jesus, to be witnesses of our faith in him because of how we love, because of how we serve, then why wouldn't we? We have to jump at the chance. We have to uh, be chomping at the bit to serve and love our neighbors well. If it means uh, this person will come to salvation because of how we choose to display love and serve them well. John 13 verse 35 says, By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. If your neighbors are far stretched for you or someone that you don't know is a far stretch for you, then start with the people that you know. If you and I love each other well, serve each other well, it becomes far easier for us to love those furthest from us uh, better and well. So put into practice the, the uh, things that you're going to do for this week or this point on um, to get yourself and walk yourself to a place where your life is in service to others because of your faith in Jesus. And as you and I do that, we get to point to him and we get to reveal the glory of our Father in heaven and the amazing work that he's done in our lives. So I'd really love for you guys to just have a little chat amongst yourselves uh, after this. So it's not just like a quick and abrupt end. But um, I'm really hoping that the faith to serve, the faith in Jesus to serve is so deeply embedded in our DNA, in our spirit, in our hearts and in our minds. That how we live our lives from this point on looks so drastically different because of our faith in Jesus. Pleasure being with you. Catch you guys in the next video.